Here we have completing Gauss Jardin elimination with a two by two matrix. So the first thing we do is convert this into what it, what's called its augmented matrix. So we're basically going to turn in system of equation into a matrix. And how do we do that? We're gonna use one column for the coefficients of X, one column for the coefficients of Y. This bar will represent the equal sign and then one um, column for the constants on the right side of the equal sign. So here this matrix would become two, negative four, negative 10 for the top equation, and then negative six, positive 14, and 22 for the bottom um, equation. Now notice that there's no variables in here, but this does represent the coefficient of the variable x, this represents the variable coefficient of y, um, and then these represent the constants to the right of the equal sign, right? This little bar is the equal sign, okay? And you always have to remember that the top row is equation one, and the bottom row is equation two, okay? That's how you write an augmented matrix. Now, from there, we have to do what's called gauss jardin elimination. Gauss Jardin elimination is basically the process of turning what you have into this matrix. So you'll want to get the diagonal matrix on the left hand side or the identity matrix on the left hand side and whatever you end up with on this side will be your solutions, right? Because you're basically saying 1x and no y's equal this number. So now you know what the x equals. Here you're saying no x's, but one y equals this number. So now you know what y equals, and therefore you've solved the system. X will equal a, y will equal b, and so if I write this in point form, this would be the actual solution, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, let's go ahead and try to do that with this problem. So the first thing that I want to try to attack is I want this guy to be a one. We know from the topic where we were finding inverses that in order to get a one, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm gonna take row one times the reciprocal of two, which is one half. And that will give me my new row one. And I find it very important to write this down so that if you do get it wrong, you can kind of backtrack and find your error. So if you know what you were you would know what the numbers need to look like and then you could find your error, okay? So for here, um, my matrix will become, row two will stay exactly the same, right? We're not changing that one. I'm gonna take half times every single one of these elements. So this will become one, negative two, and negative five. Next, I need to change um, this guy into a zero, okay? Now, in order for me to change it to a zero, I have to multiply the one. I have to use this one to get this to be zero. So if I multiply this one by a positive six, a positive six plus a negative six will give me zero. So I'm gonna go positive six times row one plus my row two to give me that new row two so that my zero is right here in row two. So I'm gonna do the math over here on the side that times six is six, this guy times six is negative 12, this entry times six is negative 30, and the row two elements are gonna go right underneath. Now when I add these together, that's gonna give me zero, positive two, and negative eight. And so my new matrix is gonna be zero, two, and negative eight. The top row is not changing. So this I'm just gonna carefully rewrite. Now we move on to the next one. We need to make this guy one. Always get your ones first and then use them to get the other people in that column to zeros, right? So how do I get this to turn to a one? I have to multiply again by the reciprocal. So I'm going to be doing row two now times the reciprocal of two Coincidentally, it's the same reciprocal, and that will give me my new row. So row one will stay exactly the same, and 
zero times a half is still zero. Two times a half is one, and negative eight times a half is negative four. <coughs> I do the multiplication in my head. If you need to use the calculator, you can be more than welcome to use the calculator to find these values, okay? Um, next thing I need to do is I need to use this one to change this guy to a zero, okay? So if that's a negative two, that means I need to turn this guy into a positive two. So I'm gonna say positive two times row two plus the row one should give me my new row one, okay? Um, so let's see what we have here. Positive two times row two. Well, two times zero is still zero. Two times one is two. And two times negative four is negative eight. Row one goes underneath. This becomes one, zero, and negative 13. So then my row one becomes one, zero, and negative 13. My bottom row does not change. It stays exactly as it was before, okay? And now we can go back into the equation form. So equation one becomes one X plus no Y's equals negative 13. <coughs> Excuse me. Here I have no X's plus positive one Y equals negative four. How can you clean this up? Well, you don't have to write zero X and zero Y if there's no X's and no Y's, right? And instead of writing one X, we just write X. And instead of writing positive one Y, we just write Y. And so if they ask you for the answer like this, you could just type in the numbers where the X is and where the Y is, respectively. But if they ask you for the answer in point form, then you must put in the X coordinate first and then the Y coordinate. <coughs> Excuse me. So depending on how Alex wants you to find the answer, make sure you follow those directions. But we did solve this using the Gauss-Jardin elimination.